Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. October 31st is a date of deep antiquity. In the Christian calendar, it is the day before All Souls Day, All Hallows Day, the eve of which is known as Halloween, a time for trick-or-treat and benevolent mischief, long celebrated by children. But the history of this eve is mephistic and malevolent. In the Celtic calendar, those brooding, dark, bloody people celebrated it as the last day of the year, a day given over to witches and warlocks and their sinful and wicked revels. We, we found her this morning, ma'am, just the other side of Grant's Woods. The child, child was dead. Oh, my dear. How? Well, that's the question. She'd been savaged by... Well, I... well, if it wasn't for the fact we ain't had a panther or a cougar or a mountain lion in this area for the last 20 years, I'd, I'd figure one of them for the cause. If it wasn't... What do you figure? Well, Miss Taylor, that's just what brought me to you. mystery drama, The Queen of Cats, written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Tammy Grimes. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If I were to mention casually lycanthropy, Kinanthropy, or let's say, versipellis, I doubt if the words would stir any emotion. But if you knew that all these terms apply to the transmigration not only of souls, but of bodies, further than that, if you knew they apply to the unholy and unnatural exchange of the human body for that of an animal, if you are informed that these words are part of the glossary that refers to the werewolf specifically and in all his forms, would you not feel a run of icy fingers down the backbone, a clutch of terror in the throat, a desperate feeling to cry out, let me wake up, I don't want to live this nightmare? If you don't, just turn off the dial. But if you do, don't go away. They are hunting me down again. They are hunting me down the night again. As they have through all recorded history. The bullets whistle through the air and choke the wings they thud in the sea. In other years, they would have been arrows before that spears. The same swish. The same swank as they find a mark. Only century after century, they travel faster and make more noise. Yet today, I have less concern. I know none of the weapons turned against me. This place to do it. The sharp open stick is a literary anachronism. Besides, even if I'm it, what does it matter? I have 99 times 9 lives to use up since the dawn of time. Nine times more than the lesser gods. I... <laughs> I am a cat. Yourself. Plenty for all. Napoleon, Nero, Marie Antoinette, behave yourself and okay. Now then, there we are. Plenty for all. Good wholesome food. Oh, dear. 
Why do people always drop in unexpectedly at dinner time? Coming! All right, now be good, kiddies. Maybe a new brother or sister is coming to join you. Yes, can I help you? Uh, Sheriff Lodge Baskin, ma'am. I wonder if I could come in for a short spell. Why, you're more than welcome, Sheriff. Can I get you some tansy tea? No, I reckon not, ma'am. Uh, the, the reason I come by... Is... Sorry I don't have anything stronger. I know how you men are. No, no, but... no it ain't that, Miss Taylor. I'm here strictly on business. No. Oh. Well, won't you sit down anyway? You suppose there might be somewhere a bit more private than... <laughs> than here in front of all my boys and girls busy at a hearty meal? Of course. Let's go out of the kitchen and go into the sitting room. Don't use it all that much being alone, so I hope it's fit to visit in. Well, I'm sure it will be just right, Miss Taylor. <laughs> now, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to have to bring this up, but, well, it's sort of a question about, uh, about your cats. What about them? Well, you, you got to admit you got a powerful lot of them. I do. I know my neighbors figure me and my touched, but I don't want to be just plain human. I want to be humane. Oh, Ma'am, I, I don't mean to score you, but... These Rockies, we're lucky enough to live and breathe in, are one of this country's great natural preserves. But we got outsiders come by the thousands from the east and the south, the north and the far west. We make them welcome here. And all we ask is they leave it the same as they come. So why did they leave all the debris behind them? The garbage is nothing. We can pick it up or let it rot into the earth. The animals are something else again. The animals? Pets, birds, dogs, raccoons, whatever. But most of all, the easiest animal to take advantage of, the cat. They fondle them, feed them, and pet them for a quick summer. And then, when they head for their real home, leave them to fend for themselves. You think me loco because I gather the strays and give them a home? I, I didn't say that. You didn't I, have to. I reckon I do now. Oh, Why? Well, I don't want to make this any more unpleasant than it has to be, ma'am, but, well, one of the Clark children, Susie to be exact, going on 16, disappeared last night. We we found her early this morning in Silvermine Woods, just the other side of Grant's clearing. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I don't think so, ma'am. The child was, the child was dead. Oh, my dear. Well, that's the question. She'd been savaged, but... Well, if I didn't know we haven't had a panther or a cougar or a mountain lion in this area in the last 20 years, I might figure something like that for the culprit. And if you don't figure something like that, what do you? Well, ma'am, no one of them alone, of course, but if they was in a pack... Are you trying to suggest that my cats could have been responsible? Well, I'm only doing my duty by asking questions. And, and then let me answer them for you. I have 63 cats, each of which has a name, and each one is just as different as you and me. I let them run free, but they cannot go beyond the fence I keep them inside of. Silvermine Woods is at least four or five miles beyond my compound, and every one of my cats is accounted for as of this minute and last night. And the door out is through the parlor arch to the left. Oh, no, it ain't exactly me, Miss Taylor. It's the rest of the town. This isn't the first accident of this kind that we've had since... Uh... Since I came to town? Well, since you took to collecting all them cats. And since when has that been a crime? Well, it ain't exactly a crime, ma'am. Now, Miss Taylor, I'm asking you to be reasonable. The people in this town are up in arms. That poor child was badly mutilated. And they, think and they that want to blame it on my little pussycats. Let them prove my little boarders were responsible. Well, maybe they can't, but can you prove they weren't? Ma'am, I got a warrant here. They are forming a citizen's committee. Vigilantes, more like. Well, I hope it won't come to that. No, no, they, they mean to go to law first. All right. I'll meet them attorney for attorney. Well, that could be an expensive process. And you'll be hard put to find any local lawyer who'd want to represent you in this. It wouldn't make them a heap of friends. Then I'll import one if I have to. <laughs> yeah, I was afraid you might be stubborn. Anyways, meantime, I have a I have a warrant here to search the premises. What for? Evidence of any kind. I'd uh, 
I'd like to see the cats. I'd better come with you. Why, are you afraid they might tear me apart? My cats are as gentle as babies. I just want to make sure you don't do any harm to them. I knew it would come to this sooner or later. I could move on or fight. For me, there was no choice. I had to protect my cats. I wasn't going to be ousted. I would stay and fight. This is the office of Anthony Reddick, attorney at law. Well, come in. The door's open. Uh, Mr. Reddick isn't here, but I expect him back from court any moment. Be with you in a minute. Please sit down. Yes. Yes, sir. I, uh... Well, you see, I'm not his regular secretary. I'm just his, uh, his landlord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll tell Tony, I mean, Mr. Reddick, to call you back. <sighs> Ma'am, did you want to see Mr. Reddick? Quiet, Harris. Yes, miss, I do. He should be back any moment. Could you wait? I think so. I'm quite good at it. I'm sure he could make time to see you. I'm sure he could. Since he doesn't have any other clients. I beg your pardon? Why, that's not true. Of course it is. That's why I'm here. But it's very brave of you to cover up for him. I'm, I'm not covering up. But as his secretary... Oh, my dear, you're not his secretary. How do you know? Because I'm a very old lady who knows a great deal more about too many things than possibly she ought to. Hey, Callie, I'm sorry, but they didn't have any yogurt at the... This oh. is a client, Tony. I didn't have a chance to get her name. Hush, Harris. My name is Mrs. Taylor, Mr. Reddick. Well, how do you do? Uh, honey, would, uh, Carrie, uh, you, you want to take the groceries while I take Mrs. Taylor into the mm. office and... Uh, hey, that's quite an amazing cat. Yes. She's my most favorite. Although one shouldn't have favorites. What breed is she? I don't think Harris could be confined to any one breed. She's unique. Very special cat. An original. Shall we all go in together? Oh, I, I don't think I'd I didn't mean you, dear. I meant Mr. Reddick and me and Harris. You see, she and I are never really separated. I saw the girl's puzzled look, but I didn't stop to explain. How could I? That Harris was my other self. Or one of them. My mirror image. Or one of them. <laughs> I wondered to myself as I followed this young man into his inner office what he might think if he could see Harris. Human shape. That other reflection of me. Someday he would. For he drew me, this young man, with his blonde Viking looks and the sinuous, easy ripper of his muscles that I could see beneath his clothes as he moved. It was a long time. And desire, like a sleeping snake, uncoiled and undulated all along the old body I had lived in too long. But first came safety, as I told him what had brought me there. Well, from what you tell me, I don't think you have any real problem, Mrs. Taylor. But you're afraid to take my case. I didn't say that. Then why do you hesitate? You, well, I am a lawyer. I, I should take a look into it, first of all. You think my cats are responsible for the child's death? Not if what you tell me is true. Hush, hush, hush. You see, it isn't only my cats I'm afraid for. I beg pardon? Mass hysteria. Mob violence. I'm an old woman alone. I could be in danger, too. I need help. Please. I don't think you have anything to be afraid of. Well, neither of us do. If you want me, Mrs. Taylor, you have me. And like they say in the old funny story, that goes for your cat, too. Nothing to be afraid of. Oh, my naive and trusting young lawyer, my need for you was far different than the other life force which drove me to reach for sustenance, but no less strong. You were my desire, my blonde and trusting love god, and although you couldn't know it yet, like the queen bee and the chosen drone, your fate was written in fire and destruction. Your doom was sealed. <laughs> The nightmare has only begun. 
the fabric of it still in the weaving, the terror and disaster and agony not yet stitched into the tapestry. Remember, I said in the beginning, no need to listen unless you couldn't resist. For those of you who can't, I shall return shortly with Act Two. It's 2 a.m. A man is at your back door, cutting out one of the small panes of glass. He knows that you're asleep upstairs. But he doesn't know that waiting for him, right down the hall, is a master lock burglar alarm. The new Ultrasound X. It looks like a small stereo speaker. Just plugs into any electrical outlet. When it senses movement, it starts screaming. And it can set off remote alarms by sending a signal over the household wiring. It'll even set off remote alarms in a neighbor's house. The man eases the glass out, reaches in, unlocks your door, and... And you're safe. You can have this electronic burglar protection for less than you might think. To find the nearest master lock alarm dealer, call this toll-free number right now. 800-528-6050. 800-528-6050. Call tonight and sleep tight tomorrow night. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. Ready with the answers and advice given by professionals in helping thousands just like you, but each with different individual needs. Northwest Federal's professionals can show you, too, the best way to save for a new home, college education, or retirement. Northwest Federal's counselors can explain all the savings plans and help you set up a savings program to meet your special needs. Home loan specialists can tailor a home loan plan to help make your dreams a reality. Bring your needs to any of five convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. If you think your needs are special, so does Northwest Federal Savings. All the time. Because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. sweet old lady, Sarah Taylor, lives with 63 stray cats that she cares for. Many people out of compassion are kind enough to sacrifice something of themselves to help and care for defenseless and abandoned animals. But this old lady is a very special lady, a Halloween figure of monstrous and terrifying evil. If you haven't guessed that already, you will shortly begin to find out. Your mother is taking care of all of you. You have nothing to fear. Let those who move against us learn to cower in terror. As long as the moon is full, we rule the nights. Ours is the power and the glory. You will inherit the world. And I am your queen in whatever guise I choose to cloak myself. You like me as I am now, hmm? As I was in my first reincarnation, Harish Wola. Oh. Oh, in this guise I could hold the world in fall. But I need the flesh of virgins to keep this flesh whole and viable. And the chase is seldom worth the effort. Still, this one time, perhaps, there is a full moon... And whenever the need arises, I shall take your shape, our shape, my original form, and stalk my prey. Come in. Excuse me, Tony, but the sheriff is here to see you. Ah, well, show him in, Carrie. I'm already on my way, Mr. Reddy. Hey, mighty good-looking new secretary you got. Well, that isn't my secretary. It's uh, my fiancé. Oh, well, now, it's a pleasure to meet up with you, ma'am. You're not from these parts. No, up north. Collins. But uh, we met in the east at college. Uh, Carrie, this is Sheriff Elijah Bascom. Howdy. How are you, Sheriff? Well, a whole lot better just to see someone as pert and pretty as you, ma'am. <laughs> uh, Tony, when's a big day? Oh, late spring, I guess, soon as Carrie's graduated. I'm just out here on a visit, Sheriff. Between terms. I do get to miss the man. I, uh... 
I wonder, Miss Chisholm, if, if you could leave me here with Tony, uh, uh, Mr. Reddick, for a minute. I, I got some official business with him. Oh, of course. Uh, look, honey, why don't you go back to the hotel? You don't have to tie yourself up here. But I like it here. Besides, I have some official business with you myself. Just as soon as you're free. Bye, Sheriff. Nice meeting you. Bye, Miss Chisholm. <laughs> Tony. Hmm? Why'd you have to go mix into this whole mess with Sarah Taylor and her damn cats? I think the town is giving a very sweet and kind old lady a raw deal. Sweet and kind, my foot. She's a crack brain. Why, just because she digs cats? Oh, one cat, two, three, three, four maybe, but 63? Now, come on. You think that's natural? Uh, for her, yes. Yeah, she's uh, a little eccentric, but you know as well as I do that she isn't breaking any laws. What's the idea of harassing her? You know, you're leaning on her, Leach. Sure, sure, I'm leaning on her. You want to know why? Because the whole town's scared and is pushing and pressuring me. Now, you don't seriously think these mysterious deaths in the past year have anything to do with her cats. Where's the evidence? Well, there isn't any. You know, I know these girls weren't mauled by any house cat, or even a whole pack of them. Everybody in town knows that. Knows that it's one big cat we got to hunt down. Yeah, but that we haven't been able to. And that's what's getting to the people. It's still no reason to start picking on a poor old lady who gives shelter to animals that human beings have abandoned. I sure ought to get a medal instead of threats and abuse. Oh, son, there's just no sense to a mob, and mm. that's what this town is becoming. I gotta stop it while I still got some control. That Ms. Taylor and her army of cats is just like, what's well, like lighting a match next to a short fuse. We gotta find out what animal's out there in the dark, sure. But till we do, we also gotta get rid of all them cats, or this town's gonna explode high, wide, and fancy. <laughs> My innocent and beautiful one. My naive Adonis. How simple all problems seem to the young. Why should you draw me so close? I who have known the heights and the depths. To whom all carnal knowledge is not only familiar, but a frequent indulgence. And yet, and yet, the old inescapable desire, the hope and compulsion makes the phoenix rise again and again from the ashes. It was the girl who began it all. <laughs> she walked into my parlor by herself. Mrs. Taylor? Yes? I don't know if you remember me, but of course I do, my dear. You were that nice girl in Mr. Reddick's office. <laughs> who wasn't his secretary. As you guessed, somehow. I don't know how. That wasn't very complicated. What brings you here? I'm just here visiting Tony, and I'm renting a room. Whoever was there before me picked up this poor little kitten and made it a pet. Then, when her vacation was over, walked out and left it behind. The landlady won't take him, and I'm going back to college where they don't allow pets in my dorm. I was wondering if maybe... Of course, my dear. Come right in. Just let me take care of you. First of all, give me the little kitty. Has he been fed? Oh, yes. Then we'll just put them out with the rest of the boys and girls to play. You see, they have the whole backyard to frolic in. It's over an acre. No, 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 no. Playtime isn't over. No one comes back in the house yet. Here's a new friend for you. Sometimes they really are a handful. I don't know how you manage without any help. No, I manage. I'm not completely alone, you know. I have my, well, a relative is always with me. Tell me, did Tony send you? Tony? No. Why? I thought he might be doing a little checking up on me before he takes me as his client. Oh, no, no, honestly. This was my idea. I don't meddle in Tony's business ever. Then I'm sure you'll make him a very good wife. You are. Going to be married, aren't you? Oh, yes. This spring when I graduate. So, what is it you study that is so important? Oh, a sort of obscure field that I'm sure you wouldn't be very interested in. Parapsychology. Just what is that? Well, it's the study of, um, well, experiences and happenings beyond a natural explanation. You mean the supernatural? Well, depending on the definition. I mean ghosts and spirits and vampires and werewolves and the like. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's why it's sort of hard to explain to, to someone who... Well, I mean, I don't mean you couldn't understand, but... Well, it's a science. 
See, not a superstition. The real supernatural. Something we aren't yet ready to explain. Like ESP. ESP. Extrasensory perception. You know, it's like clairvoyance or precognition. My, such big words. <laughs> I didn't mean to be a bore. Oh, not at all, my dear. You have all my interest. Tell me, are you like that? I mean, can you see things in advance or get messages from another world? Well, uh, well I'm not sure yet. I think. That's why I'm studying, but... Well, I haven't yet proved it all the way. Maybe it would be better if you didn't. Uh, tell me, when do you have to go back east? Well, Tony's driving me to Denver on Tuesday. I fly from there. Then you only have a couple of days left? That's right. Then I disappear. Disappear? Tell me, are you going straight back to college or university or whatever you call it? <laughs> college. And as a matter of fact, I'm not going straight back. I guess it's a little wanderlust. But I'm making a couple of stopovers on the way. You know, drop in on some old friends. Going to be out of touch, hmm? <laughs> well, never really thought of it that way. But yeah, I guess I am. Um, I, I really must run now. I can't thank you enough about the kitten. And I guess maybe, maybe I should say goodbye. Of course. I shouldn't think we'll be seeing each other again. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. You might tell your Tony I'd like to see him as soon as he has time for me. I watched her move away from me, lithe, long-limbed, her stride loose and easy with the spring of youth. How I envied her for being young and for being carefree and for knowing that soon she would be beside that vital man, Tony, touching, loving, and being loved. The winds of change are blowing again. I feel the pull of the moon, the call of all the ancient carnal appetites stirring in me, the heady scent of blood in my nostrils. Death is in the air. I feel its trailing scars touching me like smoke, swirling about me, tempting me to destruction. But whose? Whose destruction? And is it worth the risk? Musings of Sarah Taylor, a kindly little old woman with a fondness for cats. Is she becoming senile, and is her brain stocked with the dreams of madness? Or is she something so primarily malevolent that she stretches beyond the borders of our belief? I shall return shortly with Act Three. Fifteen minutes. It's a very short time. Not enough time to do much. You can't read a book or plant a garden or see a movie. But if your friend has had too much to drink, 15 minutes is plenty of time for him to get into a car and drive down a dark road and run into a tree or another car and die. In 15 minutes, your friend could be dead forever. Don't let that happen. Care for him. Do something. In the same short 15 minutes, you could save your friend's life. With a few cents worth of gas, you could drive him home safely, or you could put him into a cab. Take the time to care for a friend. Fifteen minutes. That's all it would take. If you don't take the time, if you let him drive and your friend dies, think of all the years and years you'll have to live with it. Friends don't let friends drive drunk. A public service message on behalf of the U.S. Department of Transportation. The following is a paid political announcement. We're interviewing people at Chicago area supermarkets about the cost of living. You can't buy too much for a dollar anymore. The prices are getting outrageous, that's all. Ah, it's ridiculous and everything costs too much. These are not actors, they're real people. These facts are real too. In 1968, when the Democrats left office after eight years, 2.8 million people were unemployed. After eight years of Republican administration, the number of unemployed increased to 7.4 million. After eight years of a Democratic administration, the number of unemployed went down 27%. Today, after eight years under Republicans, the number of unemployed has gone up 163%. I feel the country is in need of a change. Well, I'm voting Democratic. Why are you voting Democratic? Because I've been out of work for quite a while, and I blame uh, this administration, too. For more jobs, vote Democratic November 2nd. People live better under Democrats. Paid for by Democratic Party of Cook County Campaign Fund and Democratic Party of the City of Chicago Campaign Fund. 
This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78, the time 11.03. It's a chilly 37 degrees at Midway. In J.M. Barry's play, Peter Pan, the tiny sliver of darting, reflecting light, who is called Tinkerbell, when she is dying and fading from the light of the world, is revived by Peter Pan's fervent plea to the audience. If you believe in fairies, clap your hands and Tinkerbell will be saved. Or words to that effect. It is an appeal that never fails. Young and old find themselves responding, even vocally, and certainly from the heart. Do we believe as profoundly, or even more so, in the spirits of darkness and terror and total destruction? It's a question you may answer for yourself after the conclusion of our tale. Yes? Mr. Reddick? Tony? They're speaking. Miss Taylor? Yes. I was wondering, did that sweet child, Carrie, give you my message? Well, yes, ma'am, she did. I was going to call you first thing this morning, but you beat me to it. I uh, didn't want to call too early. Heavens. I've been up since dawn. My kitties wake me with the sun. i just been waiting till you got to your office. Even thought you might be later with a young lady to dally with. Well, there hasn't been much time for dalliance. I was up all night with the sheriff hunting that panther, the cougar, whatever it is we got killing here. Does that mean you ain't coming out to see me? What? No, ma'am. As a matter of fact, I want to talk to you myself. I'll be out to see you right after lunch. That's right, nice. I'll be looking for you. Morning, Tony. Hey, darling, I thought you'd still be catching some shut-eye after last night. I didn't know you were here. You were on the phone. I didn't want to barge right in. Well, the door was open. I know. I couldn't help overhearing the end of your conversation. You were talking to the cat lady. Yeah, got to go out there and see her later and uh, break some bad news to her. But first, uh, we forget that and proceed to uh, this. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's the way to start a day. Yeah, and finish it. Uh, You have to go back to that damn university. I thought I did. But I'm beginning to wonder if I should. Hey, now, wait a minute. With your degree right around the corner, I don't want to interfere with that. You come first in my life, Tony. I'll buy that with reservations. I mean, honey, we had it all planned. I know. That was before. Before I began to get the bad vibes. About us? Mainly you. I... I get this message that you're in danger. Me? Both of us. (laughs) How? I don't quite know. It's... Well, I know you kind of laugh about ESP. Now, wait, whoa, I, I don't laugh at it. I just don't buy it. Maybe you'd better. What are you talking at? It's something to do with that Mrs. Taylor. She isn't what she seems to be. She isn't just a sweet old lady with a thing for stray cats? I mean, she isn't just a sweet old lady. You mean she's right off the tracks? No. No, I mean a whole lot more than that. Oh, Tony, hold me a minute. Hey. I'm scared. Come on, hey, take it right easy. Right down to my heels. Come on, sit down here. Get here. Yeah, hey, that's better. All right, now, come on, level. What is this? I don't know how to tell you. Tony. Mm-hmm? You and the sheriff and a bunch of others were out all night hunting. Yeah. Did you see any signs of this big cat, this whatever it is, that, that killed that young girl? No. Were there any tracks around around where it happened? No, and the ground was soft enough, so there should have been. That's why folks got the notion that maybe it wasn't one big one, but a whole lot of small ones that did the damage. Were there any small tracks? No. So how did a big cat like a panther get to that girl? I don't know. Honey, what are you getting at? Three other girls were killed this year, weren't they? Yes. When? I don't know. Let's see. One early in February, then in, well, May sometime, then the one before this, and, well, wait a minute. I know just when it was. It was August 1st, the day after my birthday. Candlemas, rudeness, lamas, and now Halloween. Hey, hey, Carrie, hang in there. You sound like you're going around the bend. I'm turning from strange corners and finding myself in dark, evil places. But I can't help it. I told you I was getting bad vibes. 
Look, hon, if messing around in parapsychology and metaphysics is going to get you like this, maybe you shouldn't go back to college. It isn't parapsychology. Exactly. It's just... Tony, part of our courses are not in science, but in history. I mean, we have to study the Kabbalah, demonology, witchcraft, and so on. But that's just superstition, a perversion of anything that's really scientifically supernatural. Right at this moment, I'm not sure, Tony. Oh, don't go and see Mrs. Taylor, please. Honey, I've got to. She's a client. And why not? Because it's full moon. It's Halloween. And whether or not you think I'm crazy, I think she's a witch. Witch. The meddling little fool with a childish dabblings into a world far beyond her. If she thought she had special perceptions, had she no knowledge of how rudimentary they were and how sophisticated and total mine are. But now she has loosed the winds of disaster and no one can blow them out but themselves unless both she and her manslave are destroyed before their knowledge can infect and drive an already uneasy town into an unchecked witch hunt. But first, one last effort to calm his suspicions. And someone better than me for that. Harish. Harish, the spellbinding. The sensual, the supreme, salacious epitome of man's basest desire. Shamalo! Yes, mistress of my soul. Harish, my domestic familiar. I give you back your own shape as you began when you first evolved from the cat. And I abjure you this. Capture and enslave the young man, Tony Reddick. Wash his mind of all suspicion of me and us and ours and of the child woman who put it there. It shall be done. It will be done. I so command you in the name of him whose name must never be said aloud. Do not fail. I will not fail. If you do, you will send us back to full slavery as a beast. And you and I will cease to exist from now to the end of time. Go. He is here. Won't you come in? Well, thank you. Uh, I wanted to see Mrs. Taylor. Uh, is she in? She's not feeling too well. Oh. She's in bed. She asked me to see you instead. I'm her niece. Hold up. Uh, well, how do you do? I uh, hadn't known that Mrs. Taylor had someone living with her until Carrie, uh, uh, that's Miss Chisholm, my fiancé, mentioned something about it today. I just arrived. Uh, are you from America? No, I'm from Europe, Transylvania. Well, that's in Romania. Uh, how did you get a visa? Oh, I got it. I didn't mean to be nosy. I uh, <clears throat> can see where most things aren't too difficult for you, Miss uh, you, Rola. I prefer first names. Mine is Harish, and yours is Tony. Yeah, well, that's uh, close enough. It sounds better. <laughs> so, what did you want to see my uh, my aunt about? Well, that's kind of a long, complicated story, Miss uh, uh, Harish. Is it about the cat? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah. Harish, I'm, I'm going to level with you. you. You know there have been some strange deaths around here. I know. But you know these little cats were not responsible. Well, if it was a big mountain cat of some kind, we'd have flushed them out by now. I know damn well it couldn't have been the ordinary little cats. Then what? Or who? Not who. No human being could have mauled anyone the way those kids were torn up. So? What? I don't know. I've, I've had an explanation that I can't quite dig, or I'd, I, I mean, be, believe. Would I believe it? Why, well, I, I won't try you. Uh, look, let, let, let me talk to you. No, right now. you can't go in there. I've got to. Now let me go. You really want me to? Well, I don't mean to be ungallant, but... Uh... You can't be unfeeling also. You're a very attractive man. Well, you're a very tempting woman. Let me tempt you. Ah, uh, you got me too late. I'm, I'm a good boy now. Are you so sure? Kiss me. Oh, come on. But not like a good boy. Like a very bad boy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, wow. Um, uh, but what, what are you after? Sooner or later, what I need from everyone, your immortal soul. Kiss me again. No, 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 no. Look, this... Harris? Yes. But... You're not. You're... You're changing as I look at you. You're... You're Sarah Taylor. Carrie was right. You are a... Damn you to eternal hell. If I cannot destroy you in one shape, I will go through all of them to stop you. And all meddlers in our world. Die, fool. Die. No one must know my secret. <laughs> How is he, Sheriff? Well, I, I can't rightly tell you, Miss Chisholm. He wasn't marked up too bad, but he sure lost a lot of blood. What happened? You got me. I had a show cause order from the health department. I took it out to Miss Taylor's. And, well, when I when I got there, the door was open. I didn't get no answer, and when I went in, well, that's that's when I found Tony. Where was Mrs. Taylor? I don't know. Unless one of them cats carried her off. A cat? Look, ma'am, I got there just at dusk, and I had a deputy with me. We we both seen a big mountain cat. Only one such I never seen. Loping away just as we got there. I sent a couple of shots after, but I missed. But it didn't. It wasn't carrying anyone. Oh no, no. If it was an animal like that, well, there must have been two. And the first one carried off Miss Taylor. Or the one you shot at was Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> Now, Miss Chisholm, I listened to all you said, but I'm a plain man, and, and even at Halloween, I don't take so good to tricks and superstition. Okay, you don't believe me. Now, I, I ain't had no college education. Never mind that. You have a posse going hunting that cat? I sure have. It's caused enough damage. Can I come along? Oh, well, no, I don't know about that. But... Elijah Baskin, you know my father was D.J. Chisholm. He taught me to shoot and handle a gun since the day I was 12. It's a day of women's liberation, and besides, I'm the only one of you can carry an old Sharps rifle that's fitted to fire its own ammo. Well, but it ain't much of a recommendation. You better change your mind. The bullets in my magazine bag are the only thing that'll bring your black mountain cat down. They're hunting me down through the night again, as they have through all recorded history. The bullets whistle through the air and chunk home into trees. In other years, there have been arrows before that spot. The same swish, the same thrunk as they found a mark. Only century after century, they travel faster and make more noise. And even if I am hit, what does it matter? I have nine times 99 lives to use up. Even more than the lesser gods. And no bullet that is not blessed by St. Hubert can touch me. And who in the 20th century ever heard of St. Hubert, let alone... Uh, uh, werewolf. Uh, 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 but someone... <laughs> that was no ordinary bullet. Oh, no. No. Not the end. The end of time. Of timeless time. And yet, I know... I, I guess I owe you an apology, Miss Chisholm. Why? Well, you was the one brought that cat down. I only fired the gun. A bullet found the mark. You aimed it. But God drove it home. A pardon? You know my daddy belonged to a little church way up in the hills north of here. I don't even know to this day what denomination it was, but it was called St. Hubert's. My daddy always said he was the patron saint of hunters. And he claimed every bullet he owned was blessed by the church. It was one of those I fired. But I fired at a black cat. Good Lord. That wasn't no black cat we hit. It was... It was a... It's a young woman. Watch. Oh, the, the shape is changing it. Oh, oh that's... That's Miss Taylor. Or whatever her real name was. Look now. Oh, oh. 
ain't nothing left but decay and flesh. Oh, and even that's gone now. It's just a skeleton. And the bones of which are turning to dust. You know something, Sheriff? No one will ever believe what we have seen. Something as old as time. A werewolf in all its aspects. The best of which is dead. Forever. Isn't that a nice, gruesome little tale for Halloween? I hope you enjoyed it, or at least were caught in its spell. If you were, have no worries, because I can assure you that, like the witch in The Wizard of Oz, ding dong, this wicked old witch is dead. I'll be back shortly. Have you winterized your car yet? This is Gene King for the Council of Better Business Bureaus. You know, with winter not that far away, many motorists are looking for bargains and antifreeze products. But don't be fooled by so-called inexpensive solutions, which promise to do the same thing as regular antifreeze. These solutions usually contain methanol, a solution which boils away quickly. You could be hurting your car's engine rather than helping it run smoothly. You know, times are hard, but be sure you don't have to pay two prices. One for the so-called bargain antifreeze, and another for real antifreeze when the first solution boils away. Why not have your regular service station attendant check your antifreeze? If the mixture needs to be changed, don't buy just any antifreeze product. Check the label first. And while you're at it, it's a good idea to have the hoses and connections in the cooling system checked, too. This is a common trouble spot in winter. Halloween is a time of thrills and chills, of brooding mystery and terrifying shadows. But it's also a time to rejoice, for with All Saints Day, the world rises anew. So, one cheery note to end all this, Tony Reddick did recover with few scars to show for his experience. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Joe Silver, Jack Grimes, and Betsy Beard. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. My friend, you do have papers, don't you? Papers? Uh, I do, and I don't. Well, what does that mean? It means I have papers that, that I can flash, but not the kind of papers that can really be examined. Are they forged? No, 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 no. They're real. A buddy stole them from that machine shop in Glassenheim. There is a guy named Louis Cardinet, except he's twice my age and half my size. Yeah, well, there's no help for it. You will have to show the papers. But I can't. Do not panic. i got to get out of here. Where can you go? Out the other end of the car. If I have to, I'll jump off the train. Maybe I can climb onto the roof. You can't do that. It's worth a try. Ah, it's too late. See? Another team of SS inspectors has just entered. Both exits are blocked. Oh, now what am I going to do? Think, my friend. Think of something. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Chicago News Radio 78. The following is a paid political announcement. Maybe some of you haven't decided if you're going to vote on Tuesday. Well, really think about the last eight years. Have the Republicans really done anything? Rampant inflation, unemployment that only threatens to go higher, total indifference to the needs of the average family. This is the legacy of the Republican administrations, and you can depend on one thing for sure. If you stay home on November 2nd, we're going to get Gerald Ford, Robert Dole, and the Republican Party for four more years. 
There are enough people in this country who want a Jimmy Carter and Walter Mondale Democratic administration, but are just too lazy to take the 30 minutes to go to the polls. Honestly, now, isn't it important enough to take the time? Listen. So I just have to put my faith and my future in your hands. If we've made mistakes that you don't want to see made again, I hope that you'll make a strong effort to get people to go to the polls and vote. On Tuesday, vote for Jimmy Carter and Walter Mondale, paid and authorized by the 1976 Democratic Presidential Campaign Committee, Incorporated. CBS News. The final Gallup poll just out gives President Ford a one percentage point lead over Jimmy Carter nationwide, but adds the difference between the two candidates is so small that it has no statistical significance. I'm Mike Stanley reporting on the CBS radio network. The Gallup poll is the first of the major independent pollsters to show the president doing more than wiping out the huge lead held by Carter early in the campaign. Taken between Thursday and Saturday noon, the poll of 3,439 voters across the nation found 47% favored Mr. Ford, 46% favored Carter. Other candidates got 3%, with 4% of the respondents undecided. Although showing a 1% edge for President Ford, the Gallup poll winds up with essentially the same conclusion, too close to call, that was reached by the CBS News New York Times final election survey that showed Carter with a slight lead. The New York Times 50-state electoral vote survey shows states with 222 electoral votes, solid four, or leaning two, Carter, while Mr. Ford has 198 solid or leaning electoral votes. That leaves 118 electoral votes rated toss-ups, it takes 270 electoral votes for election. American historian Arthur Schlesinger predicts a Carter win Tuesday by a clear margin in the Electoral College, but a slim margin in the popular vote. He makes that prediction in an article for London's Daily Express. In the same article, Schlesinger criticizes what he calls Carter's perverse political skills, which, according to Schlesinger, have turned almost certain victory into possible defeat. Kicking off his final California campaign Sunday night in San Francisco, Carter spoke of, but ruled out, defeat. Tonight, we're on the eve of a great election. And I don't want to lose, and I don't intend to lose. For just a minute. Just a minute. You're right. Just a minute. I want to look to the future. I said, America, in the future, with a new spirit, I said, America, where national pride is restored. President Ford, a continent away in Long Island's Nassau County, was proclaiming he would score a resounding victory next Tuesday. So here's a clear choice. We have President Ford who wants to reduce our personal income taxes, who wants to give industry a break so that it can expand it can modernize. It can do the things that produce jobs for you. That's where I stand. Well, Jimmy Carter, he's up and down. President Ford then went on to Canton, Ohio, where he's spending the night. Carter flew from San Francisco to Sacramento for his overnight stay. Both will wind up their campaigns tomorrow night in Michigan. The Geneva Conference on the Future of Rhodesia was reported within a hair's breadth of collapse on Sunday, but was saved by a British concession to black nationalist demands. Western diplomats said the blacks, in a stormy session, confronted British Chairman Ivor Richard and finally made him acknowledge formally that Britain, Rhodesia's colonial ruler, alone had the right and duty to transfer power from the white minority to the black majority. A three-day international conference on Cyprus has ended in Frankfurt, West Germany, with a call for the U.N. Security Council to take action to back its resolution on the divided island. The final communique of the conference said the Security Con uh, Council should take immediate measures to stop the colonialization of the Turkish-occupied part of Cyprus and the continued separation of Greek Cypriots from their homes. More CBS News in a moment. <laughs> 